this guy claps vampires for money, which means he's basically Black Van Helsing. Equality moment. So we start with a little tour of the US state of California. Then we finally settle in the dirtiest pool I've ever seen. Why is there a rodent in there? All right, California. But look on the bright side. There's someone cleaning it right now. Okay, why did you stop? I hope you're not getting paid for that because that pool is still filthy. Oh, wait a minute. Why does he have a gun in his crate of cleaning supplies? Oh, wow. He's gone from cleaner to full on mask man in one quick second. He's entering the house heavily armed and he sets a string at one of the doors. He's going around the house with his revolver when an adorable old woman comes in and asks what he's doing in her house. But instead of being kind to this adorable elderly woman, he puts her down. Okay, wait a minute. That doesn't look so adorable. She's built different, like a vampire. Oh, this is about to be bloody. She's now going at her pool guy, aka Bud, really hard with some really wicked vampire moves. His gun is practically useless at this point. This woman is really just taking bullets like they're cookies. He then tries stabbing her, but all she does is puke some vampire fluid on him, and she's back at it. Eventually, he gets her, knife through the neck style. When he finishes with her, some other vampire dude is running towards him, but this one is an easy clap. The string at the door does the job, and his pistol finishes it up. Now he's taking some teeth from these vampires, and he also takes some granny clothes from the wardrobe, because his clothes are so badly messed up. Now, my man is driving around in his pool services truck, looking dripped out. Okay, he looks terrible. Anyway, we move to another vampire struggling in a cage, when a woman, who is a real estate guru, orders for him to be buried alive, except that he's being buried under cement, and not sand. Oh boy. Now back to our bud. He's now back at his apartment, taking a shower and dressing his wounds. He changes, and he's off to pick his daughter up in school. Late as hell. His brat of a daughter gives him a little shit for being late, and they go get yogurt while she's playing a video game. After yogurt, they head back home to the girl's mama, who's on all fours. Scrubbing the floors, of course. Little girl goes up to her room while her parents get in a little fight, because Bud is not being totally honest about what he does for money. Bud, the conversation quickly changes to her thinking of selling the house, an idea Bud doesn't really like. It would mean his ex-wife moving to Florida with his daughter, and he hates that idea. But that's what's gonna happen if he doesn't come up with the money for her tuition in seven days. That's five grand. Oh, and another five grand for braces. So our guy here has to come up with ten large before Monday, or his daughter's on the first flight to Florida. Toy unboxing channels make that in a day. Here's the problem. He's poor. You can tell he missed the Bitcoin train, just like me. His first stop for cash is a pawn shop. He meets this guy named Troy, who he goes to sell the vampire teeth to. He was expecting like four grand from the youngins and twenty grand from the elders, but Troy is offering only eight hundred dollars for the youngins' teeth and two k for the elders. Apparently, Bud can't go to the union, so he's stuck with this guy. If only he could mint those canines on the blockchain, whatever that means, because then he'd have some valuable NFTs. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so bad. That one deserves an unsubscribe. Let's just go ahead and do that. Anyway, he thinks he can get more money from the teeth, so he doesn't sell them all to Troy. But he still needs some more cash, so he trains his shotgun and his Jordans. Personally, I'd sell my soul before I sell my Jordans, but that's just me. He's back in his truck now, and his daughter calls asking if they're moving, but he promises her they're not. Oh, that's a bold statement from a broke man with no shoes. Anyway, later that night, real estate lady who's also a vampire herself pulls up at the vampire granny's house, and she sheds tears of blood when she sees how dead she is. They smell her bud in a piece of glass that cut into him, and they're now on the lookout for him. The next day, a cowboy-looking D-O-double-G who goes by the name Big J links up with Bud at the dry cleaners and promises to help him get back into the union because that's the only place he can make the type of money he needs in that short of a time. Bud was kicked out of the union last time, so Big J is sticking his neck out for him. There's a vampire joke in there somewhere, I think. Apparently, the dry cleaning shop is a front for the union. They go in and head straight to meet the boss who opens Bud's file full of violations, including endangering a fellow union member's life. Because of all that, he was given a life suspension, but he's now making his case that he's a changed man. I've tried that with my ex. It doesn't work. With Big J vouching for him, the boss gives Bud another chance. But it's much stricter now. He's basically now assigned a babysitter who will be following him to every mission. He wants the night shift where the money is at. But the boss insists he stays on day shift. Hey, that's the name of the movie. Bud now goes to the cage to sell his vamp teeth and he gets nine grand for it. But then his dues and other charges are immediately taken out from the money and he's basically left with spare change. While he's there, the boss comes and says that the guy over the counter will be Bud's union rep. But Seth hates field work and he's trying to get out of it, but the boss insists. This is sure to lead to comedy hijinks. The pair don't get off to a good start, but they'll get used to each other. Anyway, after Bud is done making his special bullets, he and his new partner head out to hunt at an animal shelter. While they're on the lookout in the truck, Bud tests his partner's vampire knowledge and homeboy is doing great. After the test, they tail some guy to some abandoned bowling center. While Bud is going after the target, he instructs Seth to remain in his truck and hands him a gun. You know, just in case. But the dude doesn't believe in guns. Because of a squirrel, he couldn't shoot back when he was still a child. Traumatic. Meanwhile, Troy is being attacked by the real estate lady, Audrey, and she's giving him a vampire lecture after nailing his hand to his desk with a knife. Basically, she wants Bud, but he's a real G. He doesn't snitch, but unfortunately, still gets stitches. And by stitches, I mean he's dead. At the bowling alley, Bud offs two vamps easy, but one gave him a little tough time. But Seth came in and gave him a hand, and he clapped the last two. He got the teeth, and they were out. Regular day at the office, but not for Seth. He's really not about this vamp life. He's out there puking and peeing himself. Bud gives him some words of advice, sends him to the back of the 
truck and they move. Bud drops Seth home and then finds a book which he forgot to take with him and Viola. A bunch of violations. Seth had written a lot of violations Bud made to go submit to the boss. He doesn't like it, but he heads home. There, he meets a lady who's a nurse. He helps her with her basket of scrubs and heads to his apartment. The next day, he picks up Seth and immediately confronts him about the violations. Seth is trying to defend himself, but Bud tells him, if we went by the book, we'd both be ripping peace by now. Buddy softens up and asks his partner to give him a couple days. Seth says okay and they move to Troy's pawn shop where they see the mess Audrey created. Apparently, she left a message with Troy's teeth. Creative. Bud is trying to leave ASAP, but Seth is trying to play by the book and report it to the union. So, an argument breaks out. Bud eventually tells him he might lose his family if he reports. That got to Seth and he agreed to give him till the weekend. So they leave and Bud is home now in his apartment with five locks. The next day, they're back on the grind as usual and they meet some other hunters, the Nazarian brothers, of whom Seth is a huge fan. Bud and the brothers banter with each other and the brothers suggest that they team up and hunt together. Split the proceeds equally. Bud agrees. Now, they get kitted up and of course, the slow-mo walk. Is an action movie really action without that slow-mo walk? By the way, in case you're curious, that thing around Seth's neck is to prevent him from getting a hickey from a vampire. But before they break into the house, one of the brothers spits gum into the other's mouth. Ew, man. Just ew. Anyway, they get in and it's a killing spree. Wait a minute. Am I the only one that thinks that vampire sort of looks like Chris Brown? Just me? Okay. After clapping the first three, they think it's done. But a minute later, more vamps start falling from the roof. The cupboard, the walls, everywhere. Bud and the brothers are baptizing these vampires like it's a church service. But when Seth is met with his first vamp, he pees his pants again. While this lady is busy running circles around him, he doesn't even know how to take the safety off his Glock. He's not about this life for real. Meanwhile, the other guys are just having fun. They're offing these vamps with different styles and weapons. There's that 360 with the knife, there's the haircut, one uses the spit, and the brothers even do some kind of teamwork with their bullets. They're just having a swell old time. It's like Disneyland for them. Meanwhile, Seth is still struggling with his first vamp, but the brothers came and saved him. But after the clapping festival, it's Seth's time to shine. He's able to recognize these different vamps, and he figures there's something fishy because these different vamp species would normally never choose to live together. The brothers try to dismiss him, but Bud takes his side and says he has a point. But they'll get to that later, as right now, he has to go pick up his daughter and take her to a birthday party. He gets to the house, and guess what? There's a booklet with Audrey's face on it in his own home, but he doesn't yet know she's coming for him, so he suspects nothing. He tries to talk his daughter out of the party because he knows people are out to get him, but you know kids, that's never going to work. He eventually takes her to the party, because you know, he's father of the year. And while he's there, he gets a call from Audrey who threatens to off him and his family. Soon as she hangs up, he sees two guys in a black car giving him that look, and say no more. He goes, grabs his kid, and they're out of there in no time. He knows he's about to go crazy with the driving, so he buckles his daughter in and sets her game up for her and puts her headphones on. Thank God for Fortnite. But just before he goes to the driver's seat, he makes this guy stop living who is trying to do the same to him. Listen, bud, I hear you, but you just ruined a perfectly good hoodie. Anyway, his little girl doesn't mind the reckless driving because she's a reckless driver herself in her video game. But she's probably better at this driving thing than her dad, because she wins her own race and is now helping her dad win his. See you guys? Video games teach valuable life skills. The race is a crazy one though. He gets away by shooting his tires to be able to fit his truck into a small passageway. The truck behind him can't fit, so he drives home unfollowed. They're home now, finally. Now they can catch their breath a little. Psych! Audrey and her crew are already there. They grab him and his daughter. They already have his wife, so now they're all held hostage. And this is the first time he's telling his wife what he really does. Hunt vampires. It sounds ridiculous to her. She probably thought he's been out late because there's another woman in the picture. But finding out that she has been separated from the man she loves because of vampires is doing her head in. They take his wife and daughter away and he's left alone with Seth, who has now been turned into a vampire. They smash his head on the floor before they leave, so he blacks out. He and Seth wake up at the same time and Seth is now going through the emotions of being a vampire for the first time. He then lunges forward to take a bite of Bud, but he beheaded him. Seth, however, managed to reattach his head to his body following the directions from his own head. He's now holding his own head in place and the speed bump Bud drives over isn't helping, but he's on a mission. This is officially a cartoon. Bud heads straight to that nurse lady in his apartment building because he's so sure she's the one who ratted him out. She gives her guy a little butt whooping before she tells him why Audrey is after him. He tells Bud that the granny he took out at the beginning is actually Audrey's, wait for it, daughter. Yes, daughter. Crazy family tree, isn't it? Well, she gives some vampire explanation of how that happened, but who cares? Now, Bud understands why she took his wife and kid. After his realization, Seth comes into the room still holding his head in place. But as he comes in, he just can't hold it any longer. He let the head roll. He's helped by the nurse who gives him some sweet blood to drink, and that straight up heals his neck. Convenient. Meanwhile, Audrey is now explaining to Bud's daughter that she took her from her dad because her dad took her daughter from her. Speech level 100. You guys got what I said, right? Anyway, the new crew of Bud, Nurse, and Seth are coming for them, and we have another slow-mo walk, which leads to another clap fast. Vamp Seth is a whole different animal. He's tearing arms and beating butts. But the crew of three soon get overwhelmed, and while they took cover, Big J pulled up with some insane machine gun and saved the day. Apparently, Seth texted him earlier. Having a scaredy cat with you may not always be a bad idea. Anyway, they now split. Bud and Big J go upstairs and do some more good old vamp annihilation before they move towards where Audrey is. But they're passing through some creepy cave, and it's vamps just coming out from everywhere. But it's not too much for them to handle. Never 
mind, one gets a chunk from Big J's neck before going down. So, because of that, Big J forces Bud to go ahead alone and even shoots the gate shut. The vamps are now coming at him in droves. At first, he's basically using them for shooting practice, but as soon as his shotgun is out of bullets, he tears his shirt open and detonates some crazy bomb. But just before he does, he throws a gang sign and says, West Side for Life. Now, I don't know if that was Big J or Snoop D-O-double-G himself talking, but I know that that's my favorite part of the movie. It was without a doubt one of the lines of all time. Bud sees the explosion and knows that Big J is gone, but he doesn't even have time to mourn as he immediately has to battle man in a suit. <laughs> Bud gets his Bud beat for a few seconds, but Nurse Vamp and Seth come and take over, allowing him to go find his wife and kid. He finds his wife being dragged and beaten up by Audrey, and he makes the mistake of shooting at her. It seems the bullets have turned her into some kind of Flash and Hulk mutant. She's rushing at him and throwing him everywhere. I call hacks. Meanwhile, his wife and daughter have front row seats at Monday Night Raw and are shouting words of encouragement at him, though I don't think they're helping. But what do I know? Anyway, Audrey now had Bud's neck set for the Last Supper, but his wife comes from behind and penetrates her with a stick. Whoa. They all think the day is saved, but come on. You gotta do better to eliminate Audrey. Meanwhile, at the other arena, Nurse Vamp and Seth team up and rip off both arms of the man in a suit. Now that both hands are off deck. <laughs> Nurse and Seth go in for a feast. Back to Bud. With the stick with which his wife stabbed Audrey still in her chest, Bud knew there was only one thing left to do. He got his gun, pointed it at her, muttered his mantra, wood to the heart, silver to the neck, and then shot her. But she turns and laughs at him. She took the load to the mouth, and it's still there. She laughs at him for wasting his last bullet, and then rushes at him. Little did she know that the silver Bud was referring to was not the bullet. It was, yeah, that. So, he saves the day, and they're heading out now. On the way, he sees Big J's hat and hands it over to Seth. When they get back up, the boss walks angrily towards them and starts reading Bud all his violations. But Seth knows the law so well, and he's defending Bud with some loopholes. Sounds like the American justice system. The boss walks back a beaten man. So, Seth and Nurse Vamp leave and let Bud have some family time with his wife and daughter. The parents kiss and make up, and little girl says she's gonna be a vampire hunter when she grows up. And they shut her up immediately. Bud and his family get in the car, drive off, and live happily ever after. The end. Not really. It's not the end until Snoop D-O-double-G says it is. Okay, now it's over. Moral of the story? What does Snoop Dogg do it? Guys, we're almost at a million subscribers and the year's almost up, which means it's begging season. So please, do the thing.